I was on TikTok the other night and a black woman was saying she didn't need anybody but herself because she's super independent. This is very dangerous. Because at the end of the day, we all need somebody. If you're a woman and your car stops on the side of the highway and it's almost midnight, who do you have to depend on? Who can you call besides your insurance provider? I understand women want to be seen as independent, but we as black women, we don't understand the strength of being feminine. Don't get so lost in being independent that you find yourself being treated like a man everywhere you go. I just had to say that because you're never going to find another group of women screaming that they don't need help in this life, that they don't need human connection. You're never going to hear it. We as black women, what are we labeled as? Masculine. Being a feminine woman represents strength. Do you know how much you can accomplish in this life just by being a feminine woman? You don't have to argue and scream with these dudes. Let them argue with themselves. And now let's move on to the main topic. Holly Weird. If there are sex parties in every city, I go to all the sex parties in LA. They're whack. I could throw better ones. Just start throwing them. Maybe. Take me through a night at an all your day sex party. What would it be like? I mean, I, the sex party I just went to, I was just like, oh, I, all I saw was generational trauma on a bed. Can I get some details on what happens here? So you, you arrive where it's a nice house in the hills, I'm assuming? Yeah. So a nice house in the hills. A lot of the celebrities have masks on. Then it's a lot of agents and money men. Ooh, I'm Ugly. I'm a sex party with your agent, huh? Yeah, exactly. I saw a few of my old agents like, yeah, I knew you were a little down low freak. Um, and then like they do a performance. All the performers are only fans people. Mm -hmm. Their their company heads are usually there. All of the big ones are there. All their their big girls are there. They all have sex with each other. Chicks with dicks is very big in LA. Everybody from rappers to LA. sports guys to everybody. Everybody wants a woman, a female face, female titties and a dick fucking them. I've honestly gotten off to that point. To each their own. I've, I've gotten off to watching it. I thought I was watching the most beautiful woman get fucked, and I was, like, using my vibrator, and I was like, this is so hot. She was getting pounded up against a kitchen table. Mm -hmm. Perfect tits, most beautiful face I've ever seen. And then she turned around and had the most massive dick and just threw the guy down and just started fucking him. And I was like, damn. I don't have a dick, but that was... battle of attrition <laughs> there going on there, huh? I stopped for a second. I was like, should I be getting mm -hmm. turned on by this? It's like when you watch your first rape porn and you're like, should I do this? Never and then you, And then you feel disgusting after. Yep. You never done it? No. I'm definitely a target. It's a boys club. It's the boys protecting the boys. I'm 27. I'm scared to death what I'm facing. And here are these boys laughing at home, playing, all these rich powerful men getting to do whatever they want. The essence of Heidi Fleiss's defense, if the allegations are true, the customers are just as guilty, even if they are in high power positions. Would it be fair to say that perhaps some of the men who are making the laws and applying the laws are also involved in what they are trying to prosecute here? I would think so, without question of a doubt. I read in Esquire magazine, um, he was being detective Glenn Ackerman is being interviewed and he answers the phone and it's quotes a very important international businessman he says I may be in Heidi's trick book and Glenn Ackerman reassures him oh you have nothing to worry about Ackerman is the head of administrative vice directly in charge of Fleiss's case quoted as saying the men involved are individuals of substance. Like individuals of substance from all walks of life, including the film business, according to Cla Captain Glenn Ackerman. Ask him who they are. Ask, go, go interview Captain Glenn Ackerman and ask him who these individuals of substance from all walks of life are. I and have a pretty good idea you. from the tapes we had that we obviously cannot refer to specifically. But it went way beyond just movie producers. You want us to name names? No, I don't want you to name names, but I do I think people <laughs> have the right. I mean, if you want to name names, you're more than welcome to. But I do want to, people to understand that we're not talking just about movie producers. We are talking about a hell of a lot more. Christine, my, my, neither my client nor I want to be responsible for ruining somebody else's life. I've been ripped to shreds, and I don't know if I could do it to someone else. Even if they're sitting at home supposedly laughing and talking to Ackerman and, 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 and you're going to take the rap for the whole thing? It makes me sick. And it goes through my head and I waver. But it's, it's a very tough decision. 
Heidi Fleiss, born and raised in California and became a madam at 22. These women today don't need a madam. They have their cell phones. They can pimp themselves out. I actually seen a YouTube video where a group of men were angry because women can now pimp themselves out and they don't have to depend on a man to do it for them. Times have really changed and that's why men are so angry. They've lost control. They've lost their way. But if they put more effort into their purpose in life, they can gain back control. But instead, they're focused on women getting to the bag. There is no reason why women out here should be out earning men, working harder than men. And we have to be honest, while a lot of these women are at corporate America Monday through Friday, you have a lot of black men that are sitting on the internet all day screaming, black women ain't shit. It doesn't look right. It should be the other way around. I saw a video on TikTok and a black woman was saying how she went on a date and the guy was telling her, hey, can you help me with my car note? So you got men seeking out money just like women. Now let's move the conversation along to Shira Seven. She did a collaboration with Brandon Blackwood. I must be living under a rock. I never heard of this man, but every woman knows who this guy is. He is known for his amazing purses. Where is he based, did he say? New York City? Oh, okay. Well, Shira Seven made people mad because while she was on live with her fans, she went to Starbucks and everybody got mad asking her about Palestine. And Shira said, listen, I don't give a damn. Why are people acting brand new? Shira been telling y'all for 10 years she's all about the money. And now y'all want her to be a history buff? Come on. They want these popular influencers to be like beauty contestants. They want you to look good and they want you to answer questions on the economy, on history, and all the world affairs. Shira Seven is getting tested right now. She's becoming really mainstream because she got Chloe Bailey saying sprinkle sprinkle so she has celebrities watching her and now that she's becoming such a major name they want to see if she's going to change for the super big bag but so far she was not changing and i'm not surprised and will she ever change probably not Shira's job is to get to the bag, not to give us all a history lesson on Palestine. Now, Shira Seven's fans, they love the collab. Roll the clip. Is everything set? This is a collab that I didn't know that we needed. And this might be my favorite one of the year. At least, this got to be at least top 10 of the year. I know it's only January, but listen, Shira Seven and Brandon Blackwood. Chef's kiss. So... If you don't know, Brandon Blackwood is a luxury designer. He has handbags and different accessories. Shara Seven is a creator who has been around for many, many years now. She has more recently in the last couple of years really blown up from people taking her YouTube clips and putting them on all different platforms. She is the one who coined the phrase sprinkle sprinkle. Okay, if you know, you know. Um, she does a lot of content about relationships, dating, living the soft life, right? The soft girl luxury life when it comes to dating. What they call high value men, high income men, right? And so this collab is perfect because when we look at influencer marketing over the last several years, I feel like we have seen a lot of just one-off campaigns. Um, they lack substance. Just, you know, a brand reaches out to an influencer. The audiences may or may not even align, right? But they do the collab and nobody really cares about it. Now, what I am seeing and hopefully we'll see more of are collaborations with influencers and content creators like this one with Shara Seven and Brandon Blackwood, where it is a lot more intentional and we're actually doing product collabs, right? So we see product collabs all the time, but they're usually with top name celebrities, right? So you have um, like Rihanna and Beyonce and Michael Jordan, right? You have all these celebrities partnering with um, different very large retailer brands. Now what I'm hoping to see is this coming into the creator space for content creators and influencers to actually do 
product collaborations. Like recently I've seen with Amazon doing this with influencers where they're able to create their own line with Amazon. So I can see this really taking off, especially with mid-size and larger companies that really have the budget to make this happen. But I feel like we just have to give this campaign right here some attention because it was genius. I think the execution is flawless so far. They are launching a collab for Valentine's Day, right? So perfect. She talks about relationships. She talks about dating. But then you also pair it with their audiences really caring about luxury and high quality, right? Because it's a luxury brand. The things that Cher 7 talks about with her sprinkle sprinkle, right? Very high life, high luxury. The audiences just mesh together so well. I think that this is going to do amazing numbers. The way that they executed this look is perfect. A lot of people didn't even realize it was her. So tell me, what do you think about this collaboration with Shara 7 and Brandon Blackwood? Do you think you'll see more brands doing collaborations like this? I surely hope so. I think this was done fabulously. And I really can't wait to see what the rollout looks like for the rest of this launch. Even though Brandon Blackwood took down Shira 7's uh, video from his social media, Shira wasn't phased. Her fans asked her about it and she said, listen, it was a cool experience. I got some free stuff and I'm good. Shira is never going to let you see her sweat which is why she's so successful. She could be burning up inside, but she's not going to show it. Now, anybody else probably would have been crying, but not Shira. Shira's like, listen, the show goes on. You know, there's people actually happy about the Shira collab not working out. And it's so damn sad because we as black people, we do not know how to support each other at all. We be so scared somebody's going to get ahead of us. And you got other races. They understand coming together, everybody wins. But we don't understand that. We don't get it. I'm always happy when I see a black man or a black woman get a major opportunity because in the long run, that's good for everybody. We don't understand how to capitalize off each other's strengths. We'd rather fight each other. And where the hell do we get that from? I don't know. But we need to clean this shit up. I'm Star. Thank you so much for coming to the channel. I'll talk to you next time. Good night.